Hello and welcome. This is Rufal Monger, and my friends, this is the Quan Chi Starter Guide for Mortal Kombat 1. And we're going to be going over a lot of topics in this video here. Just what Quan Chi is all about, what's good, what's bad, what you should be looking for, some example combos, and some example cameo pairings. So I guess first off, let's just talk about the pros and cons of Quan Chi here. And of course, for your ease of use, everything will indeed be timestamped for you if you want to skip ahead to anything. But first, let's talk the pros and cons of Quan Chi. Quan Chi got a lot of pros, got a lot of cons. He's not a middle of the road character. He is a character of extremes. So uh, we'll talk con number one out of the gate. Uh, as you can see here at his health values, he's tied with Natara. So he is tied as the lowest health character in the game. Now, nominally, that's a bad thing. And it sure is. That means he simply can take less hits. But that means he has low health because his strengths are pretty overwhelming. So Quan has the zoning suite. Do we got a basic fireball? Sure. Do I have a fireball that can hit you overhead from full screen? You betcha. How about a weird trap from full screen or anywhere on the screen that I so choose? Sure. Air fireballs? You better believe it. Can I buff my fireballs in weird and interesting ways? Also, you better believe it. So Quan Chi's offense, when it comes to like the projectile suite and even normals, because like his normals here, as you see, they're a little different, right? Uh, they're very, very powerful. He has good buttons for the most part. He has very strong projectiles. He has a very odd threat matrix in that when he jumps back, you really got to start wondering what's up next. Because if you just rush your way in, well, he's got maybe the single best air projectile in the game. It's an incredibly aggressive angle, very fast travel. It's mid, right? No neutral ducking like the ground based version. He can do it quite low to the ground if your timing is good, right? So that makes it very extra threatening, right? And the obvious answer is the jump. Thing is, if he catches you jumping while he's jumping back, if he just like empty jumps and commits to nothing, and he sees you do anything, he can teleport you anywhere on the screen, right? This is just one of his strengths. That teleport is lightning fast for what it is. It is wicked fast. And it is an overhead too, by the way. Not that it matters if he catches you on the air or whatever, but... So just a simple jump back. Is he going to throw a fireball? Is he going to wait and see what your reaction is? Because he can catch just about anything you do on reaction with a quick teleport, right? Uh, when it comes to the usual zoning stuff, he's pretty good at it. Now, on top of this, we mentioned that teleport. That is his only armored reversal if you do the enhanced version. And it's not fast, like to call for what it is, right? So on top of being low health, if you're getting pressured and you like relying on armored EX moves, he is not a good character for it. Uh, it'll be easier to break his armor than others because simply the move is slower or they might have time to recover and block in time and the move is assuredly unsafe on block. And other weird little things defensively, like, you know, we all love our pokes, right? Down one is half the game sometimes. And he has no seven frame move. His stand one is eight frames. His crouching one, while well, has longer range than some, I suppose, is nine frames. So he does not have the stock quote unquote fast move like everyone else does. Seven framers, and of course no six framers either, right? But yeah, no seven frame basic move. So his moves are slower. He effectively has no panic buttons. He has a slow armored move, and he doesn't have the stock seven frame jab like the majority of the cast. So strong zoning suite, good buttons, interesting options that are certainly unlike anything else in the game. And that's kind of mixed up with the fact that his defense is very weak. Uh, people are going to get in on you. Once they get in on you, you just got to be a smart player. You got to know when to defend, when to try to steal a turn. You'll have no defense other than being a good player and using the universal options. Another weakness, although this is made up of the fact, once again, he has very strong neutral, right? He controls a giant portion of the screen. He can kind of hit you no matter where you are, whenever he wants to, right? But his combo damage is a bit lower. Now, yes, you know, pick the right cameo. You can get the damage. Like, we can get high damage if you have the right cameo, especially one that's basically purely tailor-made for damage, like Scorpion is, right? But in most scenarios, you're just not going to get a lot of damage compared to the average character. Your damage is going to be about 
three, four, five, six percent less than everyone else on any given combo. By design, uh, you'll be winning a lot more just random neutral exchanges than the average character, so it sort of balances out, right? But yeah, in the end, extreme pros, extreme cons. Now, let's talk some notable normals, and he's got quite a few, not the least of which, I guess the showstopper, stand four. Yeah, what? I, I kicked you in the back of the head from full screen. That's how this move works. A lot of his normals kind of double as effective projectiles as well, right? So no matter where you are, could be right beside you. Once again, could be the full screen. Stand four will go there. And it's the same, say, if you were in the air, you could be at the top of a jump. And I can catch you in the air. You better believe it, right? So yeah, this is an amazing button. The only quote unquote weakness, if you want to put it on that front here, is while it certainly can combo into various things, from full screen, barring certain cameos, you can't get too much from it, right? Like, the projectile is not going that far. Other things like, say, the big old overhead, just too slow, right? So from full screen, generally gonna want some cameo help, but hey, that's the character, right? Cameos make the character. But uh, for combo abilities, good just for the odd poke, just for pressure, keep people honest, because uh, there's no travel time, right? Like, unlike a normal fireball that has to go across the screen, like say here, 18 frame startup, 31 frames of travel time. This move has 12 frame startup and one frame before it connects. So, you know, people aren't gonna see that react and jump or neutral duck or whatever. It's unseeable, for just straight up. So, great pressure. Now, admittedly, right, you have to understand if you're just doing this by itself, it's not the safest move on block because it, it can't be, right? But yeah, very powerful tool. Once again, special cancelable, right? So whatever gimmicks and gigas you want to go for, absolutely go for it, because you can. Next up, I do want to mention Stand Room 2. So by itself, I know it looks kind of vanilla, right? It's not very exciting or sexy. But the thing is, you need this for a lot of your combos. Why? A lot of your cooler big moves are slow. And the one thing that Stan 1-2 has is a lot of cancel advantage. Like the hit stun the enemies put in is exceptionally long by anyone's standards in this game. To that point, the Cyrax net. So Cyrax got a very interesting buff in the recent patch where it'll drain a full bar of meter from the enemy if the net's on, right? The thing is compared to other capture states like sub Freeze, it's always been a lot slower, but this move has so much cancel advantage you can naturally combo in the Cyrax net, let alone your own slower moves, right? So uh, when it comes to just weird stuff like this, very powerful normal. Now let's talk back three. So this is a string starter and will lead to full meterless combos. That's great. Uh, but the thing about it, this is kind of your dedicated go-to whiff punish button as well. So you probably look at stand three and I know visually it looks really impressive, like cool Eldritch monster and all that. But the thing is like, it just doesn't have the same range, right? Like from roughly around here, it'll whiff. Back three will not whiff. So they both have the exact same startup. Back three just simply has more range. Also is a low. So this is cool and you're gonna use a lot in combos and uh, it is exceptional against people that jump, which obviously back three is not, right? But for the footsies button, the whiff punisher button, all that kind of stuff, back three is the go-to and all the strings and all the combos you can get from it. Next up, down four. This is kind of like a dedicated poke button here. So 13 frame startup, which is, you know, about average-ish for a down four. Very good range, very, very good range, as you can see here. And it's kind of got the stock standard uh, hit advantage plus 15. But yeah, if you just got people closing the gap in and you don't want to commit to anything too big, this is a great button. Not the least of which on block, it's only negative six. So if they are like accidentally a little too close, on top of the extreme pushback on block, as you can see here, like it is just not punishable. So if you're just looking for some breathing room, uh, just the relative range and speed of the move combined with the pushback on hit or on block, this is fantastic for because you want the breathing room to set up all your gimmicks and tricks. Forward to one, this is very interesting. So this is a string it doesn't do anything besides what you see on paper. He sends out a big old skeleton and punches you in the face with it, right? Treat this like a projectile. Treat this like a special move. Why? Because the second hit is a mid. So whereas your stock projectile can be neutral duck because it's a high, right? This cannot be. And as you can see here, the range 
is pretty all right. And not only that, it causes a full reset on distance here. If you get hit at all, you're sending the opponent on the absolute other end of the screen, which means you got all the frame advantage in the world. Okay, I knock you back. Okay, maybe another projectile. Maybe we'll set up shop here, do our portal, whatever you want to do. You have all the space now in the world. And once again, as a mid, like treat this just as a secondary projectile, basically. Now on block, yes, is it terribly unsafe? Pretty much, right? Negative 13. But you don't want to use it from here. You want to use it from here. And when you use it from here, no negative 13 from that far away, not that big of a deal, especially if it's in the later active frames there, it's negative 10, right? So if you're using it at the range you should be using it at, it's basically a special move. It's a, it's a different fireball for you, right? Like it is just really solid for space control. Now much the same here, back three, four. So we already talked about back three being good, but yeah, as you can see here, back three, four, it's got the range. And as you can see here, it's very safe on block. Like even actual point blank, it'd be negative seven. So it's very safe against the majority of the class point blank, which is good because it's a combo starter. But at these ranges here, like you can just toss her out. The hitbox on this is absolutely wild. Like, yes, it will absolutely smoke people way out of the air. Like, like it is what it looks like. So this is also another very good screen control. And also if you're very fast, you can hit confirm the hit into the string press, but you have to be admittedly pretty quick, right? If you get it, you get it. And then you can go for combos, all that kind of stuff. But don't beat yourself up if you don't, but it's just another very good screen control option. And of course he has a bunch of other stuff like back two is holdable and is a bounce and is plus on block, which is interesting, but like realistically, it's a 58 frame overhead. If they get hit by that, they deserve, right? Other things, uh, like forward uh, two one, as we mentioned here, if you want to end a lot of combos with forward four four, it's a lot faster than four two one, and it gives another very good knockdown. It sends the opponent flying across the screen, lots of frame advantage, gives you time to say set up portals or whatever you want to do because portals are very important, as we'll talk about later in the video. So it's a good combo ender. So other than the marked weakness of Quan Chi doesn't have a quote unquote fast button, he doesn't have a seven frame move. Quan's normals are very good. Like there's a reason why he's paying that health penalty, right? Because he's got some stuff. Now let's talk Quan's special moves here. We're gonna break this up into two sections actually. The base special moves and then everything with the portal because the portal changes a lot. So first, the basic projectile. The big old skull, it's the classic. As far as basic projectiles go, travel time's fairly fast. 60 damage is pretty stock. The real beauty here is there's an air okay version. As we talked about at the beginning of the video, the angle on this bad boy is very aggressive. And also the aerial version, even when it's done very low to the ground here, like negative three. And most spaces here, like is trivial negative at the distance we have it, especially because there's a little bit of pushback on block as well, right? Very difficult to get around. So he tosses in with this, just different angles. He can control a lot of the screen with this. And if you want to burn some meter, we get a gigantic skull here. This bad boy's a mid, so no neutral ducking it. Uh, also does a lot of damage here. It is slower, right? But 110 damage is significant, right? Compared to the base. And uh, the air version, wow. So you actually have some control over the speed. So if I hold forward, this is really fast boy. If I hold back, as you can see, it's a bit slower, right? So it's really a matter of how much screen do you want to control or just want to surprise people with a really fast projectile. You get to choose, and this is the same on the ground. You want a big slow one, or you want a pretty fast one, right? Or you can just do neutral, and obviously it's a sweet spot in between. But yeah, the base projectile, ground and air, very solid, just in and of itself. And then we enter the Psycho Skull. This is the overhead projectile. This is aimable. So it has four spots. We have close, medium, far, and full screen, right? And the projectile is a little thin, so uh, it's definitely easy to, you know, miss your mark if you were, you know? So this is one where it takes a little finesse because you gotta aim it, right? Like, so if you go a little too close or go too a little far, like that's all she wrote. So the thing about it, at least uh, one thing that you've been grace is it hits all the way down. If it touches the ground, it's like a little bit of an explosion, right? So you do have a little bit of a chance if you're a little clumsy, but you really have to know where the enemy's gonna be. And it is an overhead, right? So that's good. And uh, the enhanced version is a proper launcher. 
So uh, it's a slower startup. We talked to notable normals, right? So one, two has a lot of cancel advantage. So if you're gonna combo into it, this is gonna be the one. Although this can lead to some of your more damaging combos, especially with cameos and also in the corner. We'll cover that later. But yeah, so on top of the base zoning and you know, the basic screen control, if people are just a little lazy here, the travel time is very low. It doesn't have to go across the screen, right? Because it comes from the top of the screen. So uh, it's just another layer of zone control, which makes this zoning game very powerful. And then we have the Field of Bones, another projectile. This is a little bit of a trap. So this is also aimable, just like the previous, right? It has four directions, four spots it can go, basically all the way from point blank to full screen. And as you see here, we got a little bit of a bone cage. So it doesn't do too much damage, but the one thing about it is uh, what's really cool is the enhanced version. So the enhanced version stays out quite a bit. So before it goes away, it'll be out on the screen a few seconds. So people can like just walk into it. So I can put it out here and someone walks into it, they walk into it. And the thing specifically with the enhanced version is the opponent can like move kind of like they have full control of the character, they just cannot leave the cage zone. So uh, it's like the rage cage uh, from like old League of Legends, right? Like you can move your character and stuff, but you can't go beyond the confines of the cage, which is very interesting. And naturally enough, naturally enough, right? Depending on how you hit, it goes off, then basically comes a combo extender. We'll show some example combos with that in the cameo section as well. So basically it's another way to got you from anywhere on the screen if you're uh, so inclined. Or if you want to just set up a little bit of a trap, a little bit of a no-fly zone that'll just be there for a little bit, make people second-guess their movement, that's another great way to do it. Next up, Falling Death, this is the teleport. So we already talked about this a bit in the video, but it's just really good for what it is. Once again, this is a great gotcha move because you come directly on top of the enemy, so you don't bypass any of the danger zones on the usual part of the screen, right? You catch them whiffing anything anywhere because it's air okay, right? If I'm literally over here, top left corner, and I see you with a string, I can punish that string from anywhere on the screen. So this is an, another layer of threat. Between all the options he already has, if you whiff anything, he's got you immediately dead to rights. This is also his armored move. Uh, now everyone's got some armor, right? His is slower. It's more of a desperation move than like a, something you base a game plan around, like say Johnny's EX Shadow Kick. But, you know, not all reversals are made equal, I suppose. Also, naturally, it's a little bit more damage. You just need that extra, like, 20 more damage, I guess, because that's literally all it does. But, yeah, um, it's really good. It keeps people honest, lets you get around stupid play, basically. And, of course, on the flip, lets you be stupid, because you can just do whatever and just say, blah, I'm right on top of you, right? So that's kind of always a powerful trait in a fighting game. And before we get to the portal talk, the final special move is from the fog. So uh, we're reading some HP Lovecraft here. We open our portal and a big old tentacle slams you down to the ground. This is a true low, by the way, true low. This has to be crouch blocked. And you know, he does have some overheads and obviously like the projectile overheads as well. So little gimmicky, but you know, you can keep people honest when sort of a 50-50 game. Now keep in mind, it is all the way death on block. It's negative 22, right? Uh, most characters, even out of range, will be not struggle too much to punish it. So just really be careful unless you're using like absolute max range because um, absolute max range is like the only range where you can feel even a little bit safe. Now that said, the enhanced version, this is actually our combo starter, as you can see here. And with this, we can kind of go through a you know, good amount of his combo routes. Uh, the thing, though, is it's very expensive. It's not a one-bar move. This is a two-bar move. So once again, if you want a combo with some decent damage, this is where the decent damage lies. He's a lower damage character, but you're paying for it. This is not cheap. Now that said, if whatever combo you use this in, you're probably going to get like you know, three, four, five, six, seven percent more damage. So it's worth it on the damage front. It's just, is it worth it to you on the meter front? This is more if you got the kill than anything else. That said though, the situations where it's applicable, it's all the way applicable. Meter builds fast in this game. Don't be scared just cause it's two bars. Meter builds very quick in this game. Now let's talk portals. This is one of the coolest features of this character. Basically you set up a power zone and while you're in the power zone, you can tell cause you're glowing purple, 
all your moves are just gonna be better. And just to get it out of the way quick here, let's talk the enhanced version. The enhanced version is a completely different move in that it actually is uh, kind of like a negative zone. It can push people out, as you can see here, right? It can force people's movement against their will, which is a very powerful trait. Like coming in to do a jump attack? Well, I can say, nah, you're not. <laughs> and uh, back up with the fact that, you know, you're pushing against your will if you want to, like, say, do certain uh, ambush assists, uh, cameo calls. That can be very powerful. So it's a very interesting tool, but it's not a brute force sledgehammer like the base portal. So let's talk that. So the base portal basically makes all your zoning stuff just better. So basic fireball, portal fireball. As you see, more damage, right? And this is a high. Some of these are mid. So uh, neutral ducking, not on the table here. You neutral duck it, you're gonna get hit. So generally speaking, when you have the portal up, it'll last a set amount of time. Not too long, but you know, not too short either. And you can do any two buffed moves or one EX move. So regular projectile, you see here, the air projectile, also purple. And on the air projectile, what's a little different here is it makes moves track. So as you can see here, it can curve around the enemy if they work their way in. From full screen, it's not too pronounced. It's kind of difficult to notice. But uh, if they kind of dash in, this is definitely something that can kind of hit them in the back of the head while they're working their way in, right? So that's really fun. And the X version, still a big old skull, just purple. Oh, and it teleports the enemy to you. So for combo ability, it's the easiest combo you've ever got in your life because they're literally served up on a platter to you. So that's very good. Also very strong for zoning wars now too, because while the base EX projectile certainly, you know, will beat other fireballs, it's a very powerful trait of it, but this can turn, you know, the fireball war into a full combo. You can work yourself into some decent damage, right? So that's a really fun aspect of the portals. And of course, there's still more to go. Remember our overhead projectile? Well, under the effects of the portal, it now becomes like a missile strike. This controls a gigantic part of the screen. Rest assured, against an arc like this, there's no jumping or anything. You're just gonna get blown up, right? So if you just wanna say, no, okay, we're gonna control part of the screen here for a second. It's gonna work out that way. And if you wanna enhance it, you still get the overhead and it still bounces, but you just get all these extra projectiles for free. That's really cool. And now let's talk a bonus. This is one weird effect to the point where I almost don't know if it's intended, but it's in the game, so I'll show you. And that has to do with the overhead skull as well. So if we have the portal up, do EX overhead skull, we get the overhead part, and then we get the extra like missile strike skulls, right? But there's a way to make that not happen where it'll actually take the EX and make a completely different EX. So it'll be a third EX, regular, the portal version, and a partial portal version. So the regular version is overhead mid. So you block the first part, you're good to go, right? However, if you have a portal up and if you can like get the first part of the EX in the portal, but the second part not in the portal, then it becomes overhead low as you just saw. There's definitely like a very specific spacing to this, which can be a little difficult. Um, you're gonna have to practice around with it. But basically, you're like just outside of the portal, so you're not getting the glow. And when he rears back to do the EX, like his hand will move back, that'll put him back in the portal, and then it'll move him back out of the portal. So you'll get like just a little bit for the EX first part, and then you're back out, and then all of a sudden, the overhead part happens, there's no missile strike, but the second part's now a low. So just outside, and then overhead low, right? We're like just barely re-entering the zone for a split second. And that's how that works. Like if you're too far out, it's just gonna be the same old, same old, right? You're dipping your toes in this for like a split second and it's tricky. Now the thing too, this does not trigger unblockable protection. Uh, it's like one frame too slow for it to trigger unblockable protection, which does make it actually effectively unblockable because even if you know what's coming, it is exceptionally difficult to block both on reaction. So watch out, I guess. It's pretty strong. Now let's talk some of Quan Chi's combo structure. 
as always, if you got cameos, you're gonna do more damage, but maybe that's not always gonna be an option, right? So let's talk about what he can do by himself. So for by himself, the main strings you're gonna be looking at here are one, three, and back three, four, two. So one, three is safe on block. It's negative seven, but there's a bit of pushback. It's safe-ish, like it's good to go, right? Uh, one, two, it does lead to great combos and it's much more safe on block. Uh, it's negative two with even more pushback, right? But the thing with one, two, and we'll cover some combos, but you need to set up shop in one way or another first, right? Uh, be it traps or portals or whatever by itself. Like any combo you're gonna go for is kind of a waste of meter. So let's start with the basics first. Let's start with one, three. So a little under 30%, but four 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 knocks them all the way full screen. You can set up portal, set up shop, and just do your thing from there, right? It doesn't do as much damage as some other characters can do to be sure, but it's serviceable. Now, the thing about this specifically, if your timing is a bit off, instead of getting four 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 at the end, like you might just barely whiff it. If that's an issue, just when you do jump two one, just go for the teleport stomping again. Like you'll do just barely less damage, but you know, it's, it's a safer do, right? You'll still have a good amount of frame advantage in their face so you can try a different game plan. I think forward four four is the way to go just cause full screen set of portal do your thing. But uh, if you struggle with it, just keep that in mind. So back three, four, two is the other big boy here and just a big old juggle, right? And a lot of the basic combo structure of this is very easy. There you go, 289 damage, right? A decent enough knockdown, the tentacle knockdown kind of splats him in place. And then you can go for a quick overhead or whatever you want to do. It's just a solid basic B&B combo. Uh, once again, too, uh, back three is one of your better whiff punish buttons here. The back three, four is pretty much safe on block. And if you want to just use it as like a button on its own, as long as your hit confirm timing is quick, you can basically get this just about anywhere as long as your timing is not too bad, right? So. Easy 25% if you want to use it just as a poke. Now back to one, two here. So we talked about this being important for setting up shop. So if you have say a portal up, you knock him down, you're in their face. You can actually combo directly into the big purple skull with the teleport. And then now we can get some fun things going on. So there we go. That's actually some respectable damage, right? For a lower damage character. And once again, with forward four, four, knocks them full screen, lots of frame vanish. We can set up another portal and set up our fun zone. In. By itself, the only real thing you're gonna get off uh, this is the X tentacle, but you can get that off any string. So like, I wouldn't worry about it. If you're gonna aim for that, go for like two, one, four instead. You'll just do a lot more damage. Now the corner is a funny place for Quan Chi. So if you go for like the back three, four, two combo, it's actually gonna force them out of the corner, right? So that's sometimes not as ideal. But uh, now in the corner, one, two, naturally goes into EX overhead projectile. And, you know, unlike full screen, it doesn't bounce them too far away, they're in the corner. So we can actually get some respectable damage here. And there we go, some respectable damage for Quan Chi. Once again, you know, not the highest damage character, but 35% almost in the corner. That 4-4-4 four, four, four ender gives us a lot of knockdown pressure, right? And we're just directly on top of them. So whatever you can think of, may, for the most part, will work. Don't set up the portal though, because uh, even though it's a long knockdown, the portal is just a little bit longer. So don't make yourself negative on their wake up, right? Uh, but yeah, it's just a solid enough thing. Now we're gonna cover some cameos and uh, once again, cameos, you get more damage, right? But uh, this is for combos for Quan Chi himself to be self-sufficient with. 
Now, Sub-Zero was one of my favorite choices for Quan Chi. Why? One, the health. He does give you more health, right? Quan Chi is the lowest health, tied for lowest health character in the game. So just a little bit more survivability certain doesn't, it, it helps a lot, right? Uh, you know, so many games come down to the wire and this is what gives you just a little bit more wire to work with. Now that said, Ice Armor. Like as a character who wants to zone, 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 screen control, screen control, screen control, being immune to counter zoning, kind of a big deal, right? Where you can surely just toss out your garbage and you know, a stray projectile coming your way is not gonna knock you out of it. Not a bad sell. Like this lets you do what you wanna do with a big safety net. That's very strong. Like, hey, Reiko, annoying. Stars, pretty dang good, right? It'd be a shame, you know, you like low hell zone or getting out zoned by Reiko stupid stars, right? This says, no, I'm always gonna win the zoning war. You gotta do something else. So that's good too, in and of itself. But it also unlocks more damage, more options. Maybe not as much as some other characters you might find, right? Some other cameos, but it gives you some pretty decent hit confirms cause freeze, right? Freeze works. And you can use a lot of your more damaging strings like 214, which is a bit more difficult to use by himself with this. And you can get some really fun setups. Like say after the freeze, what I'm gonna do here after you're frozen is that trap mine, I'm gonna set up that trap behind you and I'm gonna combo you into that trap and then out of the trap. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. Well, look at that. That was a weird little interaction, right? But that's what makes our combo possible. So now let me show you the combo in full. So there we go. That's uh, some decently high damage for Quan Chi, right? Good corner carry as well. Brought him about halfway across the screen and looks cool. Now keep in mind, it's a little tricky. So after the freeze, you got to dash forward and you're going to do the far, not the very far version of the trap. And then after that, when you're comboing them into him, you've got to do the follow up attack here while they're in the rage cage very fast because otherwise it will not be a natural combo. And of course, while they're frozen, you can do a lot. Like if you want to go for say the portal combos, you have more than enough time just to set up a portal. That is definitely about the easiest thing in the world. You can just literally walk up right beside them and just do the whole thing, right? So those combos are a little bit easier. It's only like 1% less damage overall, but yeah, Sub-Zero. So it gives you maybe not the most damaging, but interesting combo routes. And he lets you do neutral better. Thanks to Ice Armor, he gives you a bit more health. As a character with admittedly pretty bad defense, having cold shoulder as an invincible reversal is very welcome. Your defense is bad. This is one of the best defensive moves in the game. So having that is a big bonus. It'll shore up one of your biggest weaknesses. So just sub lets him do what he wants to do better and shores up your weaknesses. And of course, you know, gives you a little bit of better combo routes, all that kind of stuff, right? Sure, not as much as some other people, but. Sub is just a really good compliment. He's not fancy, he's not cool, no pun intended, like some of the other characters, but he's very solid for Quan. Now, Motaro. So Motaro is the opposite in Sub-Zero in that he's a negative health cameo, so you're doubling down, because <laughs> now you're much more likely to explode, right? But uh, due to his buffs, he's really good for Quan. For one, uh, he has a lot of true block strings with the tail shot, and tail shot being now plus 13 on block, is it kind of a big deal? So it lets your pressure just be crazy. It gives you another layer of pressure, which is always good. And also it makes Sand 4 a lot deadlier because you can just kind of gimmick with it. The thing here is from pretty decent ranges, it's actually a natural combo. Doesn't do a lot, but now with the fast recharge, right? It's just something you kind of spam and go with. Most, not all, but most characters don't have an easy, reliable way to deal with that. If you're really dedicated to filling the screen with like garbage and fireballs, obviously Motaro has the turret as well, which will really help with that. Long cooldown, sure. 
but it's powerful for what it is. And the really fun thing is the teleport. So teleport, when you do Quan Chi's base skull projectile, the second you press the button, you can hit teleport and it'll kind of always work because the actual projectile leaves you very fast. So if you're just looking to zone and have like more follow up pressure because you'll always be able, even if they're very far out, if the skull hits and you do the teleport, you will always be able to go into stand four. And if you go into stand four, at bare minimum, you'll always be able to go into tentacle. And depending on how close you are, you can get a lot more. Like you can go into back three, four and go into a full combo string as well, right? That's an option. Also, if you're gonna doing it kind of low to the ground, he can also rip you out of the air for that too, right? On the base level, you can do the thing. And it's also just very easy combo opportunity on hit. And at the right spacing, it can be zero to just very slightly plus on block. So that's really fun and interesting. Like that's a different way to go about it. Now here's the real fun part, portals. So same deal as always, shoot projectile, hit teleport right away, right? But this is ridiculously advantage on block or on hit. On hit, you have enough time to like dash up and do strings. That's how much insane advantage you have. And on block, it's insanely plus on block. So remember, these are like, some of these are mids, right? Like, so you just do this, throw them out and like either you're plus in their face or it's free combo. So that's really, really strong. Motaro's not a safe bet like Sub-Zero is, but he's a very interesting way to go. And finally Scorpion, cause like one, yeah, combos like, uh, in rare exceptions, like we showed at the start of the video, uh, you can actually get some high damage mid screen that he couldn't otherwise normally. And for some of the basic combo structure, like he'll do his thing, right? Like Scorpion's gonna Scorpion. He'll help you get some extra hits. Not gonna do a lot, a lot, cause Quan's a low damage character, right? But like, he'll get you get some extra hits in. The one thing that's really good is just, this is one of the best cases for the old Scorpion keep away. I know a lot of people don't think about it. It's always about up fire, up fire, up fire. But Quan can really use the space. And keep in mind, it's armor too, right? He's a character that can really benefit from just getting the F away from the enemy. So yeah, more damage, sure. That's the Scorpion special. And you'll get a few more percent on the character that doesn't do too much damage. But just the actual utility of like, no, let me get away from the enemy because my defense is really bad. This is a really good call for it. And that is Quan Chi. So hopefully this video is enough to help you just get your feet on the ground, help you understand the character. He's a bit complex, not necessarily in like terms of pressing buttons or all that kind of stuff, but just mental space. You need to have good zoning. You need to have good thoughts on screen control. Cause once again, he's a bit of a paper tiger. His offense is good. His ability to you know, put threats and just all sorts of trash on the screen is good. His offense, A+, plus. his defense, D-, minus, basically, right? He can't take a hit. His actual options of defense are bad. His armor is bad. He's got slow buttons up close. He's got no panic buttons, right? So cameo choice, perhaps a little bit more important than some other characters, but very interesting. Compared to our last DLC, Omni-Man, who was like just as basic as basic can get, and that's not a bad thing, don't get me wrong, right? Uh, Quan's definitely much more of a risk taker character. Uh, if you can lock people down, man, it's going to be hard because, you know, the zones of control are pretty big for this kind of character, right? You can do a lot from full screen. But, uh, you know, as we keep saying, the defense just kind of bad. That said, though, hopefully this helps you on your Quan Chi journey. And that all said, we are at the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching. Hope this video has found you well. And go out and play some Mortal Kombat.